So the UK pork industry is dying, and in response, the AHDB have released a £1 million TV-led campaign. It's set to go live across multiple major TV channels on the 1st of February, but the campaign has already started on social media. So the AHDB, who are they? This is very important stuff to know, actually. The Agricultural and Horticulture Development Board is basically a statutory levy board. It's funded by farmers and growers and others in the supply chain to help the industry succeed in a rapidly changing world. So essentially, farmers, pay the AHDB to look after their interests and increase their profits. They're essentially like a propaganda arm of the meat, dairy and egg industries. Keep that in mind. So this campaign is in direct response to the UK pork industry taking a massive hit over the last few years. So the UK pig flesh industry is worth about $14 billion in total. But according to the National Pig Association, since October 2020, UK pig farmers have collectively lost in excess of 750 million pounds. So for the full year of 2023, the UK produced over 900,000 tons of pig flesh. Oh my God, how? horrifying. But this is an 11% year-on-year decline and the lowest annual volume recorded since 2018. So now the ADHDB has stepped up to the plate to fund a massive pork propaganda campaign to manipulate consumers into buying more pork. I don't know if you remember the Eat Balanced campaign and that was a Again, the AHDB doing propaganda. Here it is, feed your family for less. Pork medallions tonight, and wow. dad's trying something new. So look at this, lean pork is a natural source of vitamin B12, which contributes to the reduction of tiredness and fatigue. A balanced diet and healthy lifestyle are recommended for good health. Just keep watching. Sticky pork noodles. Now look, now look. oh look, he's... Or maybe Caribbean pork. Now we're talking easy peasy lime squeezy. Who's the daddy? Feed your family for less with British pork. Now this might just seem like a surface level superficial advertisement, but this advertisement is very data led. The AHDB have data analysts and they are very careful about their campaigning. Now it says feed your family for less. What they're doing here is they're leveraging the cost of living crisis and they're saying buy a British pork, it's gonna cost you less money. And they know this because they have ran surveys and found out what consumers are most worried about. And it says with British pork because they also found out that people would like to buy British. And not only that, but in the background is a nice recipe. It's not obviously the pig being stabbed in the throat like you will see in a slaughterhouse or a mother pig stuck in a farrowing crate or a pig suffering to death in a gas chamber or or feces covered floor in a factory farm, what their data analysts found out is that the consumer likes to see a nice recipe. It's all seasoned up, cut up, and it's completely disconnected from the animal, and it's like, a, a, it's a Mexican recipe, and that's why they're going through how versatile pork is, and people go, oh, maybe I can use that in my recipes. It says, love pork from AHDB. It's got the Red Tractor certified standards, and we all know Red Tractor are the most humane, high welfare bunch of liars in the entire world. Red Tractor means nothing for animals. It's just basically traceability, and they just basically do marketing for the meat industry. And they put all these cute QR codes. If you can see this QR code, it's gonna have more information they're tackling a lot of misinformation with this. Now, this advertisement, although it might look superficial, is very data-driven. They've really thought about what the consumer wants and they're manipulating consumers at the point of purchase to buy this product because consumers are concerned with how much it's gonna cost. Is it going to be healthy and nutritious? That's why we read here, Lean pork is a natural source of vitamin B12, which contributes to the reduction of tiredness and fatigue. Now B12, you can find it in a supplement, you can find it in fortified food, you can find it in nutritional yeast. People don't understand really what B12 is, which is why they've got what it does, contributes to the reduction of tiredness and fatigue. So as a parent, you're going through and you go, oh, pork for less, it's costing me less. It's got B12, which contributes to the reduction of tiredness and fatigue. I get tired sometimes. Look at the recipe, oh, I can cook that. So they're very, very, very clever with this campaign. And how do I know this? <laughs> what I actually looked at was their video on their marketing strategies, which is very, very eye-opening. I'm gonna leave it linked down below, but they have a bunch of different people working on different things and the way they analyze their data is very detailed and granular and quite scary actually how much work they put into figuring out what people care about. Do they care more about taste? Most people actually, 85% of people eat red meat because of enjoyment or is it the environment? And then they break it down. What, what kind of environmental concerns do they have and what age group have that environmental concern? I think the main two are greenhouse gas emissions and water use. So they're gonna think about, oh, maybe we need to pump out some propaganda to help dispel some misinformation about those two things. Their marketing strategies are very data-led and very intelligent. They're trying to get people to pick it up and buy it at the point of purchase. 
It's very important for them. So in the supermarket meat aisles and on packaging is where they're putting all these advertisement, the recipes, you know, meat is a natural source of B12 and um, eat, eat pork for less and two for one and all this stuff, right? And not obviously the animals. And if there is any animals, it's just green grasses, you know, which helps the consumer think this is sustainable or this is healthy. And then they put vitamin B12 on this advertisement. It's easy to be susceptible to marketing when you're not clued up on what they're actually trying to do to you. So I think this is super important information about how they conduct their marketing for everyone to know, especially meat eaters, what they're trying to trick you into buying their product because the pork industry is going down. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to lift sales. They're basically marketing to make money for farmers. That's the function of the AHDB. They also protect uh, their legal interests. They're basically trying to protect farmers to make sure they get a fair price, to make sure that they don't have to do any welfare changes that will affect their bottom line. All of this stuff. If we actually watch this, this is what they're saying. This is their strategies. They gather and interpret evidence. So basically they do these massive surveys. They find out what people care about. Then they develop informed campaigns based on that evidence, like based on that information about consumers. And then they activate it through the supply chain and they pivot for short-term impact, but focus on long-term gains. And they try to uphold and boost confidence in industry reputation. This is a big, big one. Also improve the long-term image and perceptions around red meat and dairy. You often see farmers on social media going, look at my farm, dispelling misinformation. And then they'll look at how confident people are in farmers. And actually, when you look at their little video there, there were doctors people were most confident in. Farmers were just after them and then teachers. So they're the three categories people trusted the most. So people have a lot of trust in farmers. And if they don't have trust in a certain thing, they try to boost that confidence. And they're very big on protecting industry reputation. Obviously farmers are just you know, glorified animal abusers who are making money off chopping up animals. When we come through and we investigate and expose them, that's a big hit on the reputation. So they try to scramble to clean up the mess and go, oh, we fired that farmer. We care so much about animal welfare. We never would have expected this. And here at Red Tractor, we, we, we take animal welfare very seriously and just a load of nonsense, right? They're very big on protecting industry reputation. A consumer will buy from someone they trust. So if they trust the little old farmer with a little straw hat on and poor me, that's why there's all these poor me sob stories about farmers. Really, their business is failing. They need money. The AHDB will step in and try to manipulate the public to support the farmers who are abusing and killing the animals en masse and destroying the environment. This is very important. They find out what makes consumers tick. They have a massive focus on price and nutrition because these are the two things that a lot of the public care a lot about and taste. They're actually focusing on Gen Z with a similar autumn campaign. To boost reach awareness engagement with the younger Gen Z audience, 18 to 25 year olds, we're building on our successful autumn campaign. So they had an autumn campaign targeting Gen Z, partnership with Tasty UK, whose influencer videos provided a shift in positive attitudes towards pork, particularly in terms of nutrition, taste, and purchase intent. From February 10th, our new series, Love Pork, Student Staples, Healthy Eats Recipe videos will be seen on Tasty UK's Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok accounts targeting directly at this younger audience in a fun and engaging way. So the reason they're targeting Gen Z is because Gen Z are more likely to go vegan. And based off of this research here, in 2024, there are an estimated 2.5 million vegans in the UK, 4.7% of the adult population. The number of vegans in the UK has risen by an estimated 1.1 million between 2023 and 2024. I don't know what the hell happened in between 2023 and 2024 for such a massive surge in new vegans. Currently, 16% of the UK population follows a meat-free diet. That doesn't include fish. Over half of Generation Z, 52%, could be eating meat, a meat-free diet by 2025. They're more aware, they care a little bit more about what's going on. They're more likely to be truth seekers and have empathy for the animals and care about the environment. That's why the AHDB are directly targeting Gen Z. The younger generations, particularly Generation Z and Millennials, are leading the way in adopting meat-free diets, both in current practice and future intentions. This trend progressively decreases with older generations, with the silent generation showing the least interest in giving up meat. Gen Z is the future. I think I'm, I'm a millennial. So more than a quarter of Gen Z is currently follow, following a meat-free diet. Remember that still includes fish. Obviously fish is a meat, but they don't include it like that. So basically they are very, very concerned with uh, Gen Z. How effective are these campaigns? 
campaigns? Well, their campaigns are quite effective. According to the AHDB, consumer research showed that our Autumn Feed Your Family for Less with British Pork campaign increased purchase intent for pork by 3% and reached over 20 million adults with messages promoting the value, taste and versatility of British pork. Very interesting. So we also work hand in hand with the market intelligence team to not only develop campaigns, but importantly, to evaluate them. And the last week, Balance campaign delivered significant appeal and we saw movements on consumer attitudes around the health and the nutrition of meat and dairy. And we asked consumers their thoughts on meat and dairy pre the campaign and post the campaign. And also importantly, year on year, the campaign continues to reassure consumers about eating meat and using the information to defend their choice. So you can see the positive movement from 2021 to 2023. So essentially what they're doing with these campaigns is they're, they're testing people before and then they're testing people after and see if it's changed the way they think about meat. <laughs> this is textbook propaganda. They are quite successful at that because people don't look into things, you know what I mean? And they look very professional and it's all, they're, they're very clever about how they, do, how they do this. And people are using their campaigns to defend their choice to eat meat. Obviously very easy to debunk and the truth should cut through this, but do we have the uh, budget? <laughs> to compete with them. They've got every farmer paying them a levy, you know what I mean, to protect their interests. They're big on tackling misinformation and a farmer can put their hand up and go, hey, AHDB, come to my farm and show the, the world how nice my farm is. So basically the farmers are self-selecting to be the face of the entire farming industry, which is incredibly dishonest because of course someone's gonna come and say, come and look at my farm and it's all nice and clean and or it's a small holding farm where there's not gonna be many issues and all the factory farms are like, yeah, cheers, mate. You're helping people buy my factory farmed, disgusting, cruel, vile flesh. And uh, you can never be in every single place at once. People trust farmers to look after animals when they shouldn't because they're, they're looking after their profits at the end of the day. Look at the investigations we conduct all across the UK. There's always some form of abuse on cruelty happening on these farms. When you're using animals, they're going to be abusing animals. That's just the way it is. That's just, you can't mass produce without abusing animals. And they're all sending them to the slaughterhouse to be decapitated. How come they don't mention that in any of their campaigns? Are you okay with animals being decapitated? Maybe they should ask that in their surveys. This is a desperate attempt to save the dying pork industry. I think it's very important that we collectively keep our eye on how the industry conducts their propaganda and uh, just know what the animals are up against. Like a giant who are very clever and they have millions and millions of pounds to market and they're strategic with their marketing. And not only that, they lobby the government. That's what the MPA do actually, the National Pig Association. They'll send letters to the government and say, oh look, we need to bail out our, our pig producers and we need to protect them and their interests and their financial interests. So they've got these big lobby groups behind them. They get bailed out by the government. Politicians are on their side. Let's just look at Rishi, Rishi Sunak. I mean, he's constantly talking about back British farming. It's always about back British animal farming and never about the, the vegetable and the, the produce farmers, which we should all back. It's just these animal abuses we shouldn't back. One thing the MPA did say is that the pork industry is very fragile. This is their words. One of the most significant fragilities in the pig supply chain comes from UK farmers being so heavily reliant on four major processing companies operating a small number of large abattoirs. Approximately 90% of UK production is slaughtered and processed by these companies. With such a large contraction in the sow herd, it has made some existing plants unviable and one major abattoir closed down in recent weeks. This was uh, July last year, I believe. I think they're talking about Pilgrims, the one that we shut down. This leaves producers more vulnerable to problems in the processing sector, whether it be breakdowns, labor shortages, or any other interruption to business as usual. So she's highlighting the fragilities, saying that four major processing companies kill 90% of the pigs. And why is that? 88% of pigs are killed in gas chambers, all right, by these companies. You can have 100 uh, pig slaughterhouses and they all do uh, the electric clamp method, but four or five slaughterhouses killing 90% of pigs and the 100 killing the rest because they can, they, they can kill 4,000 a day in these places. That's how efficient gas chambers are. The mention of the Pilgrims Manchester shutting down, in, interesting, Pilgrims Manchester just decided to shut down their slaughterhouse two weeks after we released our damning investigation showing pigs suffering to death in their own feces. And then we applied pressure to them at the slaughterhouse directly after that and told them that my documentary is coming out soon. And uh, two weeks later, Bang, oh, we're shutting down. Oh, we've, it's, always been on, it's always been on the horizon. Well, I think we all know what happened there. You did it as a, a PR move. Shutting down that slaughterhouse at that time, probably the smartest move, eh, because you know what's coming. That just shows how fragile this industry is because they're relying on these four big companies to slaughter all the animals. And basically that is a big weak point for them. So just know that.
With all this in mind, it's important that we strike the pork industry. We're not just going to allow them to mass kill pigs in horrific suffering and then get away with propagating this humane lie and this nutritious high welfare full of B12, eat pork for less propaganda, which is going to encourage more pigs to go to the gas chamber. We're not just going to sit by and let that happen, are we? But I'll have more on what we can do about that very soon. Thank you all for watching. Keep a very close eye on how they, they propagate to the consumers and how they do their marketing. And as vegans and advocates, we need to keep a watchful eye on them because they're very smart. They've got a lot of money behind them. They get inside the minds of the masses. They get inside the people's minds and they build trust through their marketing campaigns. Building consumer trust in the most horrifying vile industries you can possibly think of. That's very scary. Very scary for the animals. We need to not underestimate the power that they have.